Very nice to meet you again. I will, today's, I will the presentation of the minimalism in implant dentistry. Uh, last is over the 30 years, we have treatment about the implant. And nowadays, also, also we are developing various materials and the implant and the algorithm. And with that, and uh, we have uh, some little bit uh, developed uh, of the concepts to treat very easily. So my topic will be about the minimalism and the data progress through the various controversies. Uh, this is the real patient uh, teaching of the Combim CT and the intraoral scanning. And with that, and we can make you know, occlusal friends, so we can treat it, the identitious dentitions very conveniently. This is the real patient, and the lower we had placed the four implant, and we had placed the fixed process, fixed height hybrid processes is no all one four. But patient also wanted to place the implant in the offer as a fixed processes. But with the complete denture, it is very difficult to restore with the fixed processes because and there is a very thin alveolar ridges. So we had placed the very narrow diameter implant and to the very thin alveolar ridges and with the bone graft together. Uh, as you see, the alveolar ridge is very thin, very common with a complete denture patient. So at first with a little bit of argumentation and the press the very narrow diameter implant and also the, we can see the uh, osteoporosis in this side. So it was a very difficult treatment for the dentures with the implant treatment. After the first the seven implant, and we taking an impression in the upper and the lower, and we had the donor uh, impression scanning. Not the model, not the mo impression scanning, not the model scanning. And with that, and with, uh, we have a stitching with the uh, Combim CT, and we have a STL from the DICOMS. And finally, stitching all together, and uh, we can make a uh, virtual working models. And with that, and with, with uh, some interorbital line, and the with palate to suture line and the alatrogus line from the soft tissues, we can make a occlusal levels and with that we can make a virtual setup of the tooth. As you see is a mid line from the soft tissues and but with palate to suture line much more precise compared to the soft from the soft tissues. And also, we can make a alatragus line and into, into orbitale and all combined together to make a cruiser frame. With that, we have a bulge set of the upper tooth. Due to the reception of the bone, crown tooth became to be longer. With that, we made the milling a temporary crown and the insertion into the mouth and with that we can see that midline is very collect and it in, is in good positions. So before also we are very familiar with the past uh, is a uh, first to now with the evidence base. Of course the evidence base is very important. But nowadays, with a too much fastly developed of the algorithm and the material and the motions, so it is very little bit confusing to prospect the features. But still, very however, we are confusing nowadays. We try to find the right way uh, for the simple and the easy, safe treatment. So. 
we are tra trying to redefinition of the implant treatment from the high cost, difficulty, and the risky to the low cost and the easy and the safe. Uh, this uh, high cost and diff difficult and the risky was done by the specialist. But with this concept and the general practitioner also can do implant treatment very well, even in very difficult situation. Today's very uh, contents will be implant short and low and the diverse applications with uh, some digital concepts. So very shortly I will present. Uh, first about the short. Mm. And in this situation in the sinus, the, uh, this was the bright bone level implant and the length, length is the seven millimeters. So relatively short and this very minimal augmentation of, into the sinus. And also this implant is a diameter 3.5, very narrow diameter implant. And about the tissue level implant of the bright, length from the 5.0 to 13. Also, sometimes this can be pressed into the very lower height of the alveolar ridge in the posterior side. Posterior lower. And also sometimes can be used the anchorage of the orthodontics. And also about the science concepts can be changed. And before, we usually we had placed a very long implant and much more higher argumentations. But at the time, it was very difficult and much more complications. But if you are successful with a 7 or 8 millimeters, implant can be successful in the, in the sinus. At the time, sinus argumentation is, became to be minimalized. So much less complication and a higher success rate even in bicortical fixation and the crystal appreciation and the lateral approach all together became to be very simple. And in this, uh, this is one of the uh, clinical photo follow-ups and we do uh, some very small sinus segmentation with a short implant, seven millimeters. And after the maturation of the sinus, and during the follow-up, you can see that bone remodeling was very successful. So seven millimeter length of the implant can be successful in the upper posterior as a single molars for the single molars. And so if the diameter is a seven, uh, length is the seven, and at the time is a remaining bone height one to three millimeters, right approaches, and the, three to five millimeters crystal approaches and over the five millimeters we are treated the bicortical fixation. If the shoe frame eight millimeters at the time is for the crystal approaches four to six millimeters and over the six millimeters we usually do bicortical uh, fixations. This is a lateral approaches and the before already placed a little bit sinus augmentation and the implant. But due to a problem on this side, so we must do an implant on this side with a sinus augmentation. And the before the remaining bone heart is very thin. Uh, actually is uh, around two millimeters. So after retro approaches, with the sinus augmentation and the seven millimeter length implant. Mm. After the surgery, uh, the initial stability was so good, so we did a one, st one stage surgical concepts. Mm. But only two months later, Bone stability was so very good, so we make a final processes. Before the surgery and after surgery, we tried to make a one millimeters 
this is a mucogingival junctions, and uh, we tried making incisions with a one millimeter keratinized gingival, and uh, with a small vertical incisions. After flap retraction, we tried making a hole, very small hole for the minimal sand segmentations. Uh, one month later, very good healing. We have uh, through the virtual setup, we making a uh, final processes with the zirconia, pro control of the zirconia. This is the video and for the sinus segmentations. Yogi and now I saw how many is my John Day. It's fine, it's a poor gumbo. Okay, so as you see, okay. At first, we try to make a positions of the implant uh, in the middle of the crest and uh, one millimeter uh, to the crest, including the keratinoid gingival and the horizontal incisions and the two uh, trapezoidal vertical incisions after the flap retraction and very small incisions. And also, we have used the sinus simple, dusk simple. The size is 30% is decreased, so we can make a very small hole compared to the previous dusk. So at first, the oblique approaches, but later on, we do perpendicular approaches and initial detachment of the membrane. And the step by step changed into a little bit larger instrument. And the, after the injury attachment, we do a little bit more grinding out. That is for the preventing of the grinding out of the membrane to prevent the membrane perforations. And the step by step retraction of the flap. Also, the instrument is very small, so very efficiently. We have grinding out the right row and the elevate the membrane for fresh the 7 millimeter length implant and minimize the incision and the right hole and also sense membrane elevation and also very small bone grafting with the Austin 3 collagen because collagen impregnated bone graft is very easy for the manipulation and also for the fast, uh, relatively good dome shapes of the sinus bone augmentations. And after the condensing, little bit condensing, mm. if the lateral holes is less than one millimeter, there is no need to membrane coverages. Mm. After the uh, elevation, we tried to drilling through the lower border of the sinus, and we do check the position and the angulation of the implant site, and the eros looks nice, so we are a little bit more grinding out of the bones, and the, the patient is very healthy, bone is very dense, so we have a very higher implant stability, there is around 79 with the mobility tester, so after surgery we had to press the hip healing and scan of the plant together and the mobility was the 79 very high stability so that's the reason we had to make a final processes uh, two months later and the one side we tried to stabilizations with the sutures of course suture is good enough but sometimes we can use the pin instead of the sutures with the pins and the suture we are clearing the uh, flaps but sutures and uh, push the flap to the bone so that was the faster soft tissue healing compared to the sutures and uh, that is very convenient also in a mucogingival surgery so after the surgery and the, after one is later after stitch out and uh, by the tray impressions for the final processes, 
as the impression scanning and the uh, CAD design of the final crown, zirconium milling, centering, and the only raising without any coloring, and it's setting into the mouth. So with the short implant, we have a very, a very higher success rate. And also in this patient, remainable around the six millimeters. So we are doing very simply by cortical fixations. And the bone chips a little bit penetrated into the sinus. And because there is with these compaction drills, and the tip is the clockwise. And the, in this part, it's a counterclockwise. So bone, this is a penetrated very well, but in the lower portion is the bone chip pushing into the sinus. And also sinus sim, task simply is very uh, small uh, drills and the instrument, and uh, also sizes became to be 30% smaller. And in this case, for the insured ring, after the, with the compaction drills, bone chip penetrated into the sinus with a stopper. And this is another case, is only with the compaction drills, bone chip is into the si pushed into the sinus. And also in this case, is bone chip is, is pushed into the sinus. So with the compaction drills in the for the bicortical fixation is very strongly recommended. So same patient with the, only the confection drill we have finished the bicortical fixations and the result was also good without any bone grafting. And also short implant case can be placed in the very severely destructed alveolar crest. So we have at first the bone grafting with the osteon genome. And uh, after the some bone formation, we had pressed the seven millimeter very short implant. And before the surgery, after the surgery, mm. so before and after, and uh, after connection of the abutment for the scanning and the, for the temporal crown. And uh, this is a clinical portals two months later and with the temporaries. Still some problem is the some problem is the mucous gingival problem is a shallow vestibule and the mucosa. So with the temporary crown we tried to follow up the result. And also that short implant can be pressed into the uh, maxillary palatal area and a little bit two millimeters beside the mid palatal sheet line. And with that, and with the power chain or elastic, we can push the, this, this to the posterior side. So finally, we can make a space. Also, this is short implant, five millimeter diameter, uh, five millimeter length, and the diameter is uh, around 2.5, uh, 3.0, can be very, very well for the orthodontic anchorages. Also, we can use the bend and tube, but also we can make a uh, uh, 3D printing and with bonding. With the bonding, we also have similar concepts to fooling the maxilla to the posterior side. And that's the about the narrow implant. Uh, the bright tissue level implant from the 2.0 and to the 5.0. Of course, this implant is not yet allowed it in the Kyrgyzstan, but in future, if, if possible, you would like to supply this uh, implant system to Kyrgyzstan. And usually is a normal diameter, one example, 4.5. There is uh, some exposure of the implant. And so we must do a bone grafting to cover these areas. But if you press the diameter 3.5, or diameter 4.0, and sometimes 3.5 tissue wrap implant can be pressed in the posterior single crown, and with that, we can prevent the exposure 
of the neck to the outside bone, a uh, uh, bony outside. So in this patient also we press the very narrow diameter implant, in, especially in the lower anterior, is a very good indication for the very narrow diameter implant. So very thin alveolar ridges, so after extraction, socket free germination, and press the implant into the cancellosis that to grinding out the labial bone. And after the surgery, and with some bone graft into the alveolar uh, extraction socket, and after healing, we make through the temporization, we make you know, final processes. So each pessary less than three millimeters. Diameter of the implant, very important, and the low anterior. Sometimes we can use a much more wider implant, but from time to time, and the implant feature can be exposed to the uh, oral side, especially on the labial side. So with this patient, we have instruction. And with the pin guide, press the two implant between the labial bone and the lingual bone. Two implant. Diameter is 2.0. And with the socket preservation concepts. And this is a, this, this telepotent, this telepotent, that is a function of the healing optimant, scan optimant, surgery, final optimant, all together, the, that have a function of the all togethers. After suture, and we do scanning or impressions for the temporary crown at first, with the temporaries, and at that time it's due to some uh, prevent the uh, OC integration, uh, some damages to the OC integrations, and with the sprinting to the neighboring tooth to for, for the force distribution to the nasal tooth to, together for stabilization of the temporary crown. Mm. After the temporaries, we making a uh, bite tray impression and the impression scanning that we have called it the bite tray impression scanning is we have named the BTS. And after that, through the scanning, we have a vulture setups for the final processes and the zirconia milling, centering, and grazing. This block is a multi-layer block. So uh, that as a translucent differences, also some values, not only the translucent differences, translucent and the value uh, differences, with, so usually we cannot do any more coloring for the zirconias. And they press the press into the mouse and they finished. It is a, another is a very narrow diameter implant in the upper anterior side. And also, as you see, the bone was very thin. So we had pressed the very narrow diameter implant very simply with some alveolar ridge augmentation, transmucosal augmentations. And as you see, with the, after loss of the tooth, alveolar ridge is very thin. So through the crystal incision and the pliable retraction. So uh, of course, we, uh, some, many times we had to press the uh, parallel pin to the incisive canal to as a guide of the parallelism. And with that, we, after some drilling, we had pressed 2.5, 11 length millimeters implant in, in two sides. And also in this side, some bone was uh, fractured. And so with uh, some more contour augmentations on this side, with the uh, Xenocollagen and the collagen graft too. And the sutures. And the, for the, when you do a mobility test, it was relatively good for the temporalizations. And also, after the, 
during the surgery to the uh, collagen graft and xenocollagen and also uh, after the surgery we do PDR injection for the fast soft and hard tissue uh, regeneration. A twist writer, stitch out and the pin removal and before uh, during the healing uh, before we have made the uh, flexible dentures for the temporaries. But because and the previous dentures after uh, uh, with the printing concepts and the finally will be fractured, that is due to aging. But if you are making a flexible denture, it is much more comfortable to the patient and to, you can prevent the aging. And the all is the tooth colored and that is much more uh, comfortable. Uh, Pitable to the patient compared to the pink colors. And with that, and there, there is a more ductile due to that, and the much less uh, fractures. Uh, and also, weirdness, but weirdness is 10% increased, but have a relatively good strength, this can be used very well for the temporary crown one or two years. Uh, also uh, with that concept and finally we can make uh, change the complete treatment concepts. And after surgery, uh, through the vulture model and the vulture setups, and after milling of them, we are splinting together to the adjacent tooth for the forced distribution during the provisionals. And the next will be a much more diverse application with the distal concepts. And when you do is a bite tray impressions and the intraoral scanning. And with the bite, if you do a bite tray scanning and that is much more precise in the body car. And so much less occlusal adjustment compared to the intraoral scanning. That means for the temporaries, intraoral scanning is good, but for the finals, we usually use the bite tray impressions and the scanning concepts. Also, accuracy is with the BTS much more precise compared to the intraoral scanner, especially in the anterior curved position with the pontix. So next uh, about the simple zirconia, and the before we have uh, six layers. Nowadays we are making three layers zirconia block, and then not only the translucent, also value differences. So. Uh, these two cases and we had made a final process without any coloring and staining. We have done only grazing. Mm. So we had pressed two implant after extraction and making a final process full contour zirconia after surgery, final inflations, and the bright implant system have two different distal abutment. And it's the same size and shapes. And also, this can be used as already mentioned healing abutment, scan abutment, final abutment function all together. So, after impressions, and for the right, can be approached to the tips and we do cut the borders and with the spraining. And, we, uh, and after that, and we Oh no, vulture bul model, we have a set, uh, setup of the crown. And with the vulture articulator, occlusal adjustment. And in a, on a hyperdent, we do some positioning in the upper and the lower, depending on the translucent zones. After final uh, millings and the centering and the grazing, pressed into the mouth, a uh, little bit whiter because neighboring tooth have uh, some plaques 
and a little bit darker. But patient want to be a little bit white, so we have a, a fry that is finer processes. Next will be about the CT bite check. This is very important because compared to the previous CT nowadays is CBCT is a without almost no metal artifact. So we can take a very precise STL5 from the dicom of the optimum. With that, uh, with that concept, we can make a CT-based vertical check bite. In this patient's after instruction of the most of the tooth, and we press the implant in the upper and the lower together. And there is a one natural tooth is some stops. Uh, sometimes when there is uh, some natural tooth, we can make a uh, stabilization all together to milling the some uh, resins to cover the natural tooth with a little bit particle height increasement. After surgery and with a temporary crown in a shot and the uppers, and we take we take an impression in the upper and the lower and with a city check bite with temporary crowns. Usually when you take a CT say with a with a bite with a bite we taking a CT but for the this check bite we take a combined CT with a cross mite. But sometimes for them and the patient chin can be little shear or shear can be little bit changed. So uh, before the CT taking, taking, we recommend the uh, stabilization of the occlusion with the potty materials. And with that, and taking a combined CT, and uh, through the, we can extract the STL file from the combined CT, and in the upper and the lower impression, and finally stitching together through the stitching. Uh, finally, we can make a vulture models and with city-based check bite, with a city-based check bite. Um, with a metal uh, reduction algorithm, and we, there is almost no metal artifact around the titanium. Sometimes even in cobalt chrome, is not so much higher metal artifact. And also, actually those continuously decrease na now. In future, the actually doses can be only one-tenth compared to the originals. Now we are one second. One and uh, as you see, there was a metal artifact, but with the metal artifact reduction algorithm, there is almost no metal artifact. So we can take a uh, uh, STL from the DICOM. Before with a metal artifact, it was not possible, but now can be possible. So also, uh, the X-ray dose is very continuously decreased with the denoising concept with the AIA. With that, and the, some we making a, some uh, virtual model, virtual setup, and without any models, with the full contour of the zirconia and a little bit colorings, because there is a, a not the multi layers, and this is a, a shade block. So for yttrium, so at the time we need a little bit coloring, and after the grazing and they pressed into the mouth. And also about the fascia driven, about the, some uh, anteriors when you to making a crown, there is a two problems. One is the some tilting of the incisor ridges and also midline position and sometimes uh, however midline is right and sometimes there is a little bit tilted. So with the provisional we have checking of them. But in this patient, is, uh, uh, even in finals, and there, there is uh, some tilting, so we tried to re-adjustment of them through the stitchings, and we, after re-adjusting, 
and uh, thrust into the mouth. So there will be many errors in the entries. So we are treating uh, some uh, facial smile uh, or uh, facial scans and also sometimes we can also use the facial photo but nowadays is for the marketing is a facial scan is the best but for the free size as cat works we are recommended to the this city based cruiser friend and this was the facial photos facial scan and this is from the soft tissue also we can make a mid line because the nowadays is a very large range of the images from the soft to hard tissues so we can take with only one CT we can take a soft tissue profile and the hard tissue profile all together so in my point of view CT based uh, facial uh, smile design is the best and this is a ray it shines really and uh, convenient, little bit, not so much convenient, but price is also much less. Uh, yeah. and this is a shiny 3D and the raised faces, but relatively good, especially for the marketing with, and the consulting with the patient is very helpful to uh, understanding the situation of the patient. Uh, in this patient, we tried to instruction all of the tools because the, there is no tools to be saved. So we are at first we are trying some uh, bite city bite, and we are instead of leaf gauges because leaf, leaf gauges cannot be used with the gauze bite only anteriors and with that stabilization we taking a combined city. And with in, in a stitching, with the uh, stitching intraoral scanning and the uh, STL from the uh, dicoms. Uh, from the soft tissue, we, from we taking alatragos, and also interpopularil and mid line, and also we are trying to, to check together with the. Uh, uh, Guideline from the hard tissue is a bit part of the shrine and the interorbitale and sometimes from the FH friends, the occlusal friend is a 9 degree and we try to uh, evaluation all together and the CTSTL and and the intraoral scanning images and we do stitching together we try to find the ideal occlusal frame and then after that we try to instruction of the tooth on an exocad and making a model and stitching together re-stitching together and also we try to make a uh, occlusal frame for the virtual setups and also in the future, this AI can do making an ideal occlusal friends and the two cell line crown, crown placement together. So with the very fast redevelopment of the algorithm and the, through the deep learning and the digital works became to be very convenient. And the effort, at first the stitchings, but based on the city-based approaches and the, we making a with Ryan and the Okruza friend and with the bulge, through the Bulger setups and we making a temporary dentures designing and the after the centering and also if we do another printings for the surgical guide and one is the, for the temporaries and the, or one is the surgical guides but in this uh, depend on the CR uh, repetition of the occlusion and uh, after insertion of the temporary denture however advanced area we asked for the tuning repetitory yeah thank you repetitory uh, to check the CR and the important important things of them is a repeat repeat 
exactly together in a CR. We ask the patient to continuously bite, but not so much error in the uh, repetition. So we decided to press the implant immediately after extraction. So we had the printing as one temporary and the, for the surgical guide. You know, we, about the digital guide the drill, there is a two types. Of one is the pull kit, and there is a simple kit. This hole to follow the simple kit, and in the lower position, and when you make a hole in the center in the canine area, and a little bit, yeah, the major side of the first molars. And with the stabilization after extraction and the stabilization of the uh, surgical temporary denture, and the, through the holes we are drilling inside drilling, and the first canine and the first molar site was marked. We are drilling mm. effort, and the, after the some inside drilling, we try to press the paralleling pin. After marking, but due to extraction, it was very little bit difficult to check the drilling site, so we are making a open on the labia side. The, after surgery, we will press the implant in the canine and the first molars, and the, and the, during the surgery, we had to check the parallelism all together. After surgery, in the lower. And then one year later, we decided to place the another six implant in the offers. And the one is healing. So after first the six implant and the, some contour augmentation with the xenocolagen and the collagen graft is a very good combination. With, also with the PDR line is accelerated the soft and the hard tissue healing. And the six implant in the offers. And after surgery, and with the intraoral scanning, and the healing, and with the uh, regular body impression, we are taking an impression again, again, and with that, and taking a uh, check bite with the compensate, and finally we make a virtual setup of the temporary then temporary tooth. And the, we did that, and the milling of the temporaries and the pressed into the mouse. So nowadays, is, uh, with the metal artifact reduction algorithm, that can be became to be the convincity-based check bite, and also convincity-based facial scan is available. So, however. Uh, with that and the lower uh, uh, upper anterior tooth alignment also for the pulmonary reconstruction in on a edentrous patient the occlusal for friend and the tooth alignment became to be very convenient mm. uh, thank you very much for your interesting and also thank you for the research teams and bye-bye. Uh,